Hello everyone and welcome back to the Road to 2000s. As always, I am your driver on this journey. Um, today, I wanted to look at a few of my games uh, that I've played recently, well, pretty recently. And uh, the theme of the games is going to be what to do uh, in the early middle game, right out of the opening. Uh, sometimes this is an easy question to answer if you're super familiar with the opening and you have all your prep done uh, beforehand and you know the plans and the ideas. But uh, sometimes you do have to figure it out over the board. So these are three games uh, where I tried to figure it out over the board with varying success. So I wanted to look at what I did well, what I did wrong, and what my opponents did. And uh, we'll try to come to some conclusions about uh, ways you can kind of apply this to, to any game. Uh, things you should be thinking about, ways you should approach uh, each new position. Um, so this first game is a game I recently played at the Chicago Open. Um, I went over a lot of my Chicago Open games a, a couple weeks ago, I think, but uh, this one was not shown. And uh, I did manage to win this game. So let's take a look at what happened in the opening. It was a King's Indian defense, and these were all opening moves that both me and uh, my opponent knew. And he played knight d7, which is one of the most popular lines, but uh, I'm wildly unprepared. So I had no idea what I should do against knight d7. I started with uh, castling, because we were still in the opening, and you know castling is almost never wrong. Uh, he played e5. And then uh, I had this feeling that I knew bishop e3 was the main move against e5, or a main move. And so uh, I decided I would play bishop e3 and figure it out from there. Uh, so he took, no he didn't take, he played uh, queen e7, and this was kind of the first point in the game where, okay, I'm definitely out of opening, out of the opening, all my pieces are developed, uh, how do I start to develop a, a plan, how do I make moves that make sense here? And so I wanted to ask you guys, uh, what would you do with white here? What would you be thinking about? Sure. Can't really do much. I don't think I can see much to do, so yeah, I mean, this is the base of Black's pawn chain, but it's a little it's a little tough to get at, right? Um, you know, if you're so yeah, rook c one would be a sensible move, but uh, what I was worried about in the game is I think Black might have made a threat, right? He's he's gonna take here. Oh yeah, so you so yeah, one big option is d5, and then what's the other main option? Uh, taking. Yeah, so you can play d5, or you can take. I think I've had positions like that in games, like, like that little d5 and c5, e5. Yeah, this is, this is a fairly common structure that you get out of the King's Indian. And so uh, here I had to decide what made more sense to me. So I'm unfamiliar with the opening, and my opponent has been playing instantly so far, so I'm pretty sure he's still in his book. And I had to decide if I was more comfortable playing d5 here, or d takes e5. So let's just try to think a, a few moves ahead. I play d5. What is probably black going to do? Probably play like c6. Maybe yeah, c5. he could play something like c6. I, I don't know so much about c5. Um, I was kind of expecting at some point this knight to, to come into c5, at some point uh, maybe after kicking this bishop away with something like knight g4. And there would be a lot of pressure on my center. And uh, that's not to say that d5 would be wrong. But I decided I was a lot more comfortable playing d takes e, especially after uh, black committed to queen e7, because this is not really the, the ideal square for the queen. Because after d takes e, um, d takes e, and now I have this move knight d5. And so now this queen is going to have to kind of run away and defend this weakness that you pointed out on c7. So OK, he plays queen d8. Um, I have to solve this problem of the e pawn. And I can do that a few different ways. Um, honestly, they're all fine, I think. Yeah, Jonathan? What's the problem with um, taking the knight? So sure. So instead of queen, moving the queen. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can take this knight. Uh, but then, you know, I hadn't actually decided in the game how I wanted to recapture. But I was pretty heavily leaning towards c takes. And this gives me access to that weakness on c7. Yeah, okay. Black's going to get some counterplay, uh, definitely, on uh, the e pawn here. But I thought that that would be, uh, you know, I mean, I thought I could be able to, I would be able to handle something like that. 
Um, so yeah, knight d5, queen d8. And now I do have to solve this problem uh, of the e-pawn, right? And in the game, I didn't think it mattered very much how I could do it. Um, I could play queen c2, I could play knight d2, or I could play even knight back to c3 if I wanted and offer a draw. But I probably wanted to win. I was a bit higher rated than my opponent. So it turns out later on, I found out queen c2 is the main move. But in, in the end, it, it doesn't matter all that much. So I played knight d2 in the game to defend. Also, you know, giving my f pawn some access to defend my, my pawn here. In the game, he played c6. Um, I just played a sensible move. I didn't want to trade pieces or too many pieces because uh, I felt like I had more space. So I, instead of taking on f6, which is fine, I just played knight c3, which is also fine. And my opponent played queen to e7. And uh, so for the past three or four moves, I've kind of avoided uh, actually making a plan. I've just been kind of uh, gaining some tempi because my opponent's pieces were awkwardly misplaced. But uh, this is kind of the first point in the game where you really have to sit down, or I really had to sit down, and come up with something to do. Uh, the last few moves haven't really made a great deal of progress uh, for my position, and my opponent really hasn't made a great deal of progress either. But OK, let's figure out what should white be doing in this position. So how do you go about that? Uh, how do you make your pieces better? Or, or how do you get rid of this? Right, yeah. I don't think you actually want to get rid of this, right? Because no. what happens if this pawn, like, say you played f4 at some point and you right. captured, then right. all of a sudden this bishop looks very, very strong. So what, what can we do, really? And it's important to also think what black is going to try to do. If you can't find your plan, which in this case, it's a little bit hard to find uh, the right plan for white, uh, sometimes it's easiest to look at your opponent's plan and see how you can play against that. So what is black going to do here? Queen e7 kind of telegraphs it. Yeah, there's like kind of like an open d-file, so you can maybe like move your knight somewhere between somewhere and get some work on the d-file. Sure, so there's an open d-file. So black might be planning to come to d8 and kind of put pressure down this line. But uh, there's an even more uh, pressing plan that I think black is going to do. Yeah, Jonathan? Isn't it to try to get the um, d4 square? Yeah, he, he wants to get this knight to d4, right? Yeah. So I was looking, and I was like, OK, well, the path that makes the most sense is knight c5 to e6 to d4. And then I'm probably going to be in some trouble if I let him play all these moves for free. And then he has a knight on d4. Because the counterpart, d5, is defended <laughs> by the c6 pawn. And so uh, that plan's not too hard to come up with, right? We know what black wants to do. And even if we can't figure out what white wants to do, uh, we can figure out how to stop black. And so this is a very nice way to come up with a plan in positions where it's not so clear exactly how you should be playing. Uh, it's almost always fine to play against your opponent's plan if you can't find one for yourself. So how can we, how can we play against this plan of knight c5 to e6 to d4? When you start asking this question instead of what am I doing, it becomes a little bit easier to find moves. Sure, so knight b3 would be, would be one way to go about it. Um, let's think, what can a black do here? Well, I like it also because we can get a rook there. Right. Yeah, I mean, uh, black might just play rook d8 now. Sure, queen c2. And now I might start coming this way. I think this would actually be an, an OK way to play, though. I don't think knight b3 is a, a bad move. But I came up with what I think is a slightly better move than knight b3. Because in the long run, I did kind of think I might want to expand on this queen side, right? It's kind of where my bishops are pointing. Uh, well, I guess they're pointing in both directions, but it's kind of where my knights are, are aimed as well. And it's kind of where I have more space. So I thought maybe someday I want to expand over here. So I was a little re reluctant to uh, play this knight b3 move. Okay, that's what I was thinking was really about downsides, but like, I don't even see it the other way. I mean, isn't a3, b4 too slow? That's so yeah, I mean, in the long run, you'd like to play b4. Obviously, you can't right now. 
So I came up with kind of a, a tactical way to stop knight c5. So yeah, knight a4 is also playable. It's interesting. But uh, uh, again, I'm not so sure this is, this yeah. is the right it's way really to go about simple. things. It's a little <laughs> awkward, right? Square. Um, again, black might just play something like rook d8. Yeah. So OK. So if we don't play knight b3 and we don't play knight a4, how else can we stop uh, knight c5? Uh, Julian is here, but I think Julian has already seen this game. Not quite. So the move I played was queen a4. And I think this is a, this is a pretty nice way to stop knight c5, right? So yeah, knight c5, you have this kind of a, a little strange pin where you, know, you usually don't see a queen pinning a piece to another queen, but that's just the case here. And this would be uh, pretty awkward for black to deal with. So queen a4 is stopping knight c5, and it's also preparing b4. So this is why I decided on this move. That's pretty nice, actually. Um, and now I think black should probably just continue uh, with something like maybe rook d8. I don't think I'm threatening to take a7, really. So just rook d8 and go back to his original plan without kind of panicking. Uh, in the game, he was a little bit nervous about b4, I think, and he played a5 to try to stop it. So once again, um, how should I continue now? I've kind of found my plan, right? Uh, and the way I found it was thinking, what can my opponent do? And I came up with knight c5, and then I found a way I could stop it. Right? So I want to continue shutting down my opponent's counterplay, and uh, maybe try to find a way to improve my pieces. So what can we do? People in the YouTube chat have suggested it in, uh, in slightly different lines. But yeah, there it is now. So c5. Uh, and the idea is we're taking control of some weak squares. You know, We may not have the d5 outpost, but uh, maybe someday we'll have the d6 outpost, right? So and, and there are the, the same tactics, where if knight c5, uh, they're simply queen a3, right? And unfortunately for my opponent, he fell right into this trap uh, and took on c5. Uh, once again, it probably would have made a lot more sense to just play something like rook d8. And uh, I don't know, maybe knight c4 here. And knight f8 is, is possible. And I really think uh, white is doing quite well here. So maybe you, you can't even play knight f8. But I don't know, I thought this would be a pretty comfortable game for white. And uh, there's not really more you can ask for out of an opening where you weren't really entirely sure what you're doing. So the trick here to learn uh, is when you're not sure what to do, uh, a great way to find moves is to look at what your opponent's trying to do and then look at ways to stop it. And so that's how I came up with queen a4, which I think is actually just, just the best move. Um, with that in mind, we can take a look at how it ended. So I played queen a3, uh, pinning the knight to the queen, b6 defending. Uh, I played knight b3. Uh, I think I could have played knight a4, and this was a bit stronger because of knight takes b6 threats. Uh, there was something that I was worried about in the game, but it, it was all nonsense. So just knight b3 instead. Knight d7, knight a4, and there's simply too much pressure on this knight. I took on b6, and after this, simply brought a rook to the open file. Uh, and so I, I'd say we're beyond kind of the early middle game at this point. Uh, it's pretty uh, easy to play now. You just bring your pieces into the game. I took queen c7, bishop d6, and after queen a7, there's a, a nice tactic to kind of end the game here. I'll let you guys try to find it. How to win. Ah, close. You can do a bit better than that. Um, I don't know what, what would... 
What would Black play here? Maybe just develop a piece or something? Bishop b5 might be winning. Probably but some forced way. Yeah. yeah. I think more unnatural and more forcing. Yeah, I don't like taking more forcing. <laughs> um. The YouTube chat's ahead of you. Attack important pieces. Yeah, is it Bishop? Uh, is bishop it bishop oh. Yeah, you guys got it. You guys yeah, got it. Everybody got it. This should be eight, hits the queen, and threatens checkmate. And on bishop f8, there's rook d8, uh, just pinning. So uh, my opponent should have resigned here. Instead, we played on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then I won. Um, so yeah, the big takeaway from that game uh, aside from you know fun tactics, is uh, when you can't figure out what to do, look at your opponent's plan, see if you can prevent that, and quite often that leads you into the natural plan that you should be following yourself. Um, there was one question uh, about I saw in the YouTube chat. Um, he asked if knight c4 works here, and knight c4 works just as well as knight a4. And they're both probably better than knight b3, I think. But yeah, everything's the same with just attacking b6. Uh, any other questions about this game? The idea kind of makes sense. You know, look to your opponent's plan to find your own. All right, so that's the only game I won that I'm going over today. Uh, let's take another look at a game I had against Nicholas Theodoru. I think I've played him twice now in my life. And I've lost both games horribly. That guy's pretty good at chess. But uh, let's take a look at what happened here. What's his rating? Oh, he's really 2570 now? I knew he was over 2500 when we played, but I don't think he was quite that high. Was this like a, one of those first round kind of games? One of the, uh, no, we were at Pan Ams. So it was a, uh, it was a team uh, competition. Was yes. So anyways, uh, knight a6. We have another king's Indian defense and another line that I am not booked up on. And once again, I figured castling can't be bad. Uh, he played e5. I played rook e1 here, which is probably OK. Uh, he played bishop g4. I played bishop e3 because I had heard of this idea where if the bishop goes to g4, then the knight can't go there. And the big problem with bishop b3 in a lot of positions is knight g4, simply attacking it. Uh, takes, and I take with the knight. He takes my bishop. I play knight takes bishop, which is pretty weird and pretty dumb and pretty bad. But that's OK. Um, probably it would have just made a lot more sense to take this with uh, any other piece, like the queen or the rook. Or the queen, or the rook. <laughs> Without the other knight. Probably not the other knight. No, can't hang this pawn. But uh, OK, it's fine. I played knight takes, knight g4, hitting my bishop. And so the point uh, of knight takes was I was thinking after knight g4, I'll play bishop d4 and challenge his bishop, and everything will be great. So you're basically just trying to like, play some offline and trade pieces? Uh, e Basically, yeah. Uh, trading the right pieces, though, right? I mean, this bishop is, is this bishop is Black's best piece, so I wanted to try to trade it off. But uh, bishop d4 actually is quite bad here. Um, I'm trying to remember why. I, I had this figured out. Oh, it's probably just because of takes. So takes, takes, and then uh, see if you guys can find the tactic here. Yeah, so queen h4, but then the point is... Yeah, you just play c5, and my queen has nowhere to go. Uh, nowhere to go to defend f2. Thankfully in the game, I, uh, I realized this, so I played bishop f4. But now, you know, of course, my, my move looks stupid, and I have no hope of having an advantage now, because all my pieces are misplaced. But that's OK. So knight e5, and uh, once again, I, I kind of have to figure out what I'm doing. So what do you think's going on here overall? Can we find like a plan for white, maybe? Maybe like your knight can be stronger on e5 potentially at some point. 
sure, the knight might be strong on d5. And if black ever plays c6, right. um, then this d6 pawn might be a little bit weak. But I mean, if he gets d5, then obviously that would be totally fine. Any other ideas? Uh, I mean, first of all, this pawn is hanging, I think. So we might have to deal with that. But yeah, I wasn't really sure what to do here overall in the long run, right? I don't know, maybe you guys are better than me and you can come up with a plan. But I wasn't sure what to do. And that's OK. That happens a lot in chess games, right? Um, so I just continued playing simply, right? I just played b3, uh, defended my pawn, uh, and asked him what he wanted to do. He said, I want to bring all my knights into the game and kill you. Uh, and I said, please don't do that. Uh, but he didn't really listen to me. So OK. Uh, once again, I have no idea what I'm doing, but my opponent has some idea of what he's doing, right? He wants to play something like knight d3, he wants to play something like queen h4, he might want something like f5 in the future. He's just going to bring all his pieces in and try to kill me. Uh, so once again, the only way to play when you don't know what you're doing is to try and slow down or stop your opponent's plan. I just started with bishop e3, bringing my piece to a more solid square. Uh, he went ahead with queen h4. I simply played f3, right? Um, my opponent's making threats. I'm kind of just responding in, in the best, the most solid way that I can think of because, you know, I, I can't come up with a plan. So f5. Uh, he really wasted no time in uh, kind of uh, coming after me like this. <clears throat> I simply played uh, takes on f5, takes on f5, and queen check and rook d1. So once again, I don't know if you want to consider the past few moves part of the early middle game, but uh, all I did was played very simply. I brought my pieces to the center, and I put them on the most solid squares that I could find. And this is always a, a great way to kind of fall back if you don't uh, have a, a real plan. is just improving your pieces, bringing them towards the center, and uh, making sure everything's solid, which I don't know if you would call my whole position solid here, but it's as solid as I could make it. He just plays rook d8, taking his time. And uh, let's see. I played queen d2 here, making a threat, and kind of stepping out of any c6 move. He went ahead with knight d3, so this move is easy, rook f1. f4, this move is also easy. My bishop's attacked, so I came to d4. Uh, he just plays rook f5, and OK. So uh, you might consider this past the early middle game now, but I didn't have to make a whole lot of decisions in the past kind of 10 moves, which is kind of what happens when you're playing against your opponent's plan, is they make a lot of the decisions for you, and you just have to try to play in the most solid way you can and play against their plan. So OK, now what should I do? Uh, finally, I get to make a decision. Uh, my opponent is going to play rook h5 probably, right? This is the idea, but it's not checkmate just yet. I can play something like h3. So how do you want to deal with this threat? Is this from the 2018 Pan Am? Yes. 2018 Pan Ams. YouTube chat is losing faith in my position. <laughs> but in reality, if you think about it, right? how many mistakes has white really made this game? Apologize for that. How many mistakes has white really made this game? So OK, I mean, you can consider knight e2. Knight takes e2 a mistake, right? I played the wrong move there. But after that, I've just been playing natural moves. I've been defending my pieces. And I've been uh, responding to my opponent's threats. So really, why should white be worse here? You know what I mean? That's, that's not really how chess works. If you don't make any bad moves, uh, you don't lose the game normally. I mean, can you go for like, uh, like maybe like 94 or something? 94? OK, I'll play rook h5. Yeah, 
I guess you have to play it H3 now. Yeah, it, it might be playable actually. I simply didn't want to make any weaknesses. I wanted to stay solid. The same uh, thinking I've been uh, talking about the whole time. I played king h1, oh, no. he played rook h5, I simply <laughs> dropped the bishop back to g1. Wow. Right. Staying solid. And eventually, you know, this knight is not going to stay here forever. Uh, that was kind of what I was uh, banking all my hopes on is someday in the far off distant future, this knight will have to move. Uh, he went ahead and played rook f8. And uh, now I get to do something, right? So I haven't really had a plan for the past 10 moves, 15 moves really. And uh, I've been playing fine moves though, right? Just responding to threats. And so now I can start to once again just activate my pieces. So how can I go about that? Well, maybe playing against my opponent's pieces. Um, knight e4 might be fine, but uh, I really wanted to get rid of these knights, right? So yeah. Uh, well, actually, no. I played knight e4. I was wrong. I got rid of the knights later. You're the best, Jacob. Um, OK. Uh, b6. So I brought the other knight up to d4. Queen e7. And now I played a3, which is a bad move, <laughs> right? So here is my big plan. I wanted to make this knight move, like this, attacking the knight. And I didn't want him to be able to play knight b4. This was literally my only thinking. <laughs> um, but of course, you know, up until now, I've been improving my pieces. I've been responding to threats. And then my opponent makes me, makes, lets me make one decision. And I kind of lose the urgency of the position. So I'm still kind of being attacked. And there are still things uh, I need to look out for. So. There is actually a very good move here for white, which I never would have played in a million years in the game. But uh, I'll be impressed. I'll give you guys five points if you can find it. Uh, this is the first time ever I'm offering up any points on the road to 2,000. So <laughs> take your chance now. <laughs> nope, just five, five general points. Five gold stars. Yep. If white finds this move, white's killing it. So if white's white the best. The the no, I never would have played it. Oh, you could have told me I could have played it, and I still wouldn't have played it. Oh, oh okay. Let's see if I'm better than Caleb. All right, you get five points. <laughs> so of course, you know you. G4 is not at the uh, not at the forefront of your mind here, but uh, G4 is the freeing move that White needs to to stay in this game. And the point is, you cannot take on Passant because I will take back a rare idea in chess, recapturing a piece. Um, and now this this rook doesn't really have anywhere to go, uh, and that's hard to believe, but uh, kind of kind of true, right? I guess you can come to this square, uh, but uh, yeah, F, F4. So you have this fork. Uh, if you go here, you have this, mm, either one of these forks. I don't know. Sure, still F4. Oh yeah, just F4. OK, F4 is, is the problem, right? So there you go. Um, I never would have found that, but uh, that's the move, and it's Pretty close to winning for, for white. I would never consider it. Yeah, n neither would I. I don't think my opponent did either. I don't think anybody on planet Earth uh, saw this while the game was happening. So I simply played a3, which is just wrong. Uh, if anything else, I should probably just play queen e2 or queen c2 immediately, uh, rather than kind of waste this time, because uh, my opponent didn't give up. Queen, e queen e7 looks like he's giving up on the attack, but he definitely didn't give up on the attack. So a3, knight c5. Kind of uh, showing the foolishness, the foolishness of my move. Uh, I captured. 
he captured. I played knight to b5, which is fine. He played knight c6. I played rook e1. I played rook e4. And now I'm kind of, kind of losing the thread, right? So I stopped uh, being able to find out what my opponent's plan was because he got too tricky for me. So if I had realized my opponent's plan, uh, I probably would have played differently. So what do you think Black is trying to do here? It's a three-step process, and it's hard to stop, <laughs> as I found out in the game. Checkmate. Yeah, Checkmate. So is he going for like queen e6, queen h6, h6? Is that like the only thing I can think of? I don't know. Well, that's not checkmate. Right, that's like the only thing I think bug comes to set up. Yes. Here, I'll give you a hint. Oh, wait, do you have to play like knight c4 or something? Checkmate. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, he moved his queen out of the way, and he's doing this. And then he's doing this, and then he's doing this, and then I'm resigning. Uh, well, you know, or getting checkmated. So how can I actually stop this? What should I be playing here? Maybe. The answer is pretty sad. And it shows why uh, white is actually in, in quite a bit of trouble anyways yeah, like here. Like well, sacking the exchange is, is a little bit worse than, uh, than I'm willing to give up. Uh, it turns out, probably actually even on this move, I have to play h3, <laughs> giving my king a flight square. So you know, of, of course, this is, not, this is not anywhere near ideal. And so I probably would have lost this game in the long run anyways. But the ending was pretty, pretty sad for me. He just plays knight there, and then... Uh, after a while, after this move, I guess I realize, so OK, I can come back, but then just knight here, and it's, it's over. So I could play h3, but then just knight here, and it's, it's over. Uh, so I, I ended up uh, losing pretty horribly here. And I resigned here. But uh, OK, what was the point of that game is, once again, when you can't find a plan, it makes a lot of sense to play against your opponent's plan and start uh, playing prophylactic moves that prevent his plan and uh, stay solid, play simple moves that improve your pieces, and then you really can't be worse. If you don't play bad moves, you can't be worse, no matter how the position actually looks. Uh, with that in mind, I have one more game to show you. This is a game I played against GM Nikola Mitkov, and uh, this was at, I believe, the Midwest class of last year. Midwest class sounds right. And so once again, we found ourselves in an opening where I was unfamiliar. Unfamiliar with the opening, unfamiliar with what was happening. Um, of course, I know the Nimzo Indian, which happens after this. And I know the, let's see here. I know the Rogozin, which happens after this. But I was unfamiliar with this line, which is some uh, somewhere in between, right? Uh, black hasn't actually committed this knight to f6. White hasn't committed this knight to f3. So things are a little bit weird. I decided to clarify it immediately with a3. He captured. He played knight f6. I played e3. And I just developed my pieces in the opening. I played this knight e5 move, which was a bit weird and probably wrong. But that's not what the class is about today. The class is about the early middle game. I simply developed my pieces. And after bishop d2, rook e8, we kind of, have, uh, kind of have the start of the middle game, I think. My rooks are connected. And so once again, I'm unfamiliar with the position. I really haven't uh, played many, too many positions exactly like this with this kind of structure. So let's figure out what should white be doing. How should I play? Whoops, let me take off the notation. Mm -hmm. 
So this one is a bit more clear than the last two examples. It's not impossible to find a plan for white here, right? In all of the cases, the answer has been uh, one, responding to our opponent's plan, and two, improving our own pieces. So with that in mind, let's try to find a way to improve our pieces while keeping in mind our opponent's plan. So what is our opponent trying to do? He kind of told us with this rookie eight move what he wants. What does he want to do in the next, uh, next couple moves? Any ideas? So the rook's on e8, right? So it's supporting this pawn. So of course, it's supporting this pawn push. Does that make sense? So that's Black's idea, is he wants to play e5. And now, in a perfect world, what, what does white want to do? Right? Where are white's weak points? How does, and he, so <laughs> I guess in a perfect world, white wants to get rid of his weaknesses and then you know, improve his pieces. So what are white's weaknesses? That's where we can start. What pawns or squares can black attack in the white in the white position here? Any ideas? Black's already attacking one of them. That's a hint. C3 pawn, right? <laughs> Does that make sense? So any backward pawn on a half open file is going to be a weakness that uh, you know can be targeted. So in a perfect world, white would want to get rid of this pawn. And the way he can achieve that is by playing C4 and doing something like taking on D5, right? So say black does nothing, I get to get rid of my weakness. And now I can use my pieces, and black has nothing to attack. Of course, it's not a perfect world, though. So I wanted to play c4, but on c4, I knew what my opponent was kind of planning, right? He played rook e8, which kind of shows me that his idea is going to be to play this pawn forward. He's supporting this pawn with his rook. And now I wasn't sure what was going on here. This looked rather complicated, right? Um, because, OK, maybe I can take here, but maybe he'll take on, uh, on d4. And all of a sudden, this pawn's kind of hanging, right? There's not much I can do about it. If I tried to defend it, uh, black could actually just capture because of this pin. You know, I can't take back because the, the queen would be hanging. So all of a sudden, after e5, I really didn't know what was going on. So I decided not to play c4. So what else can white do, right? Uh, I still want to improve my pieces, but I know my opponent's planned, and I need to keep that in mind. And so of course, if he plays e5 and I haven't played c4, this threat uh, doesn't really exist, right? He's never going to take on d4, because that does exactly what I want. So as long as this pawn's on c3, uh, e5 is not really going to be too big of a problem for me. So with that in mind, what other ideas can I come up with uh, to improve my pieces, maybe open stuff up for my rooks, open up files for my rooks on the queen side? Have you guys heard of the minority attack in chess? No? That's totally fine. So a pawn minority is uh, when you have, say, something like one pawn or two pawns against a pawn majority. So in this case, the majority is two pawns, and the minority is this one A pawn. So a very common idea in chess is to use your pawn minority to break down the pawn majority, right? So alone, pawns are pretty weak, right? They can't, the, you know, the pawns are at their best when they're with other pawns where they can be defended and, you know, they can kind of block things down. Whereas this pawn's alone, so it's going to be a bit weaker, right? If it's attacked, I have to use a piece to defend it. I can't use another pawn. 
So I want to kind of reverse the roles there. And I played a4. So of course, the idea is I use my pawn minority to attack the pawn majority. And now all of a sudden, I've created a weakness in the black camp. Right? Uh, black is going to have to now use pieces to defend this pawn, whereas you know beforehand, I had the weak pawn. So this is a common idea. And so I chose this plan over the other plan because it respects my opponent, opponent's plan as well. This is how you can kind of come up with moves, uh, is figuring out uh, what your opponent wants to do, uh, figuring out what you want to do, and then making your best decision based on all these plans. Um, so with that in mind, black didn't play king h8. I think I got off of the game continuation here somewhere. Um, so I'm sorry. I actually played rook c1 first, my opponent played e5, and then I played a4. With the same idea. I simply brought my rook to uh, the c file first. Uh, my opponent did want to sit back and, and just kind of let this happen. So he went ahead and played e4, attacking my bishop. Uh, I played bishop b5 because coming back uh, to, this, uh, to either one of these squares actually has a pretty significant problem. And I'll let you guys try and find what, uh, what the problem would be with something like this. It involves white's weakness, and black would be able to kind of fix this weakness on c3. Make it so I can't ever play the c4 move that I wanted to do. What do you think? Some way to control this square. How can we attack that square? Any idea? Yeah, with the bishop, right? We can simply pay, play bishop a6, controlling the c4 square, gaining a, a tempo on the queen, actually. The queen might go somewhere off uh, alone on the king side, or it might you know, stay closer to home. But either way, this pawn's going to be pretty permanently stuck here. And that's bad because it's, one, a weakness, and number two, this bishop's going to kind of be stuck looking at it. So definitely can't allow that. Uh, which is why in the game, I played bishop b5. So uh, this, of course, uh, falls into this forcing line after a6, attacking my bishop. It can't go back, it can't go forward, so it has to trade itself off for this knight. And after queen takes, uh, fortunately I can play c4 immediately now, uh, before black has the chance to kind of fix it as a weakness. So in the game he played bishop c6, I played a5, he took, I took, and we got to this position. So what do you think's going on here? Who would you rather be, white or black? Or do you think it's equal? Let me hear your thoughts. Black. You'd rather be black. So why is that? Yeah, so you've got this passed pawn. So that is, that is kind of an advantage for black. It can also be a weakness sometimes, right? Because it is isolated. So if the pawn were on a4, I would definitely agree with you. Because the further advanced a passed pawn gets, the more powerful it is. Because it's closer to becoming a queen at the end of the board. But uh, with this pawn kind of stuck on a6, um, it's probably not going to be too dangerous, right? And the main feature of the position that I think would change my evaluation of it is the fact that he's a light squared bishop and I have a dark squared bishop, right? So are you guys familiar with opposite colored bishop endgames? Yeah, so usually they're drawn. And the reason for that is they kind of are, are playing different games, right? This bishop's playing a game on the dark square, dark square complex, and this bishop's playing on the light squares. They can never really interact with each other. So what this means is, uh, you know, both sides can very often form blockades. And what are blockades? They're uh, ways to kind of stop pawns from advancing, right? 
So no matter what black does, he's going to have a tough time forcing my bishop off of this square so that he can advance this pawn. Because this bishop simply can't attack this bishop, ever. So in the end, I was pretty confident that this was totally dead drawn. Um, neither side really has many chances here. And that's because of these opposite colored bishops, the fact that white doesn't have any weaknesses, and the fact that uh, white really can't make a meaningful uh, attack against this A pawn. Um, so with that in mind, I want to go back actually a few moves. So with this in mind, uh, after a4, I kind, I kind of calculated this all out, right? It's a very forcing line. After e4, I have to play bishop b5. After a6, I have to take on d7. And after c4, I was pretty confident uh, I knew what we were heading towards here. So if I were playing a weaker player than a GM, I might have tried to be a little bit more ambitious. So. Now that we know that black's plan is going to be to play e4, what can we do to try to stop this plan, to keep the game going? We want to stop e4 somehow from closing off our bishop. How can we control this square? It's not really a trick question. Simply defend e4 so that black won't push. Mm. So yeah, someone in YouTube has suggested it. Simply f3. Uh, you just defend against the threat. Uh, and so this is the type of thinking that you should really be following in your games. Uh, you want to play your plan. But if you can really put a stop in your opponent's plan, it's usually worthwhile to do it. And I think white is actually doing pretty well uh, after f3. One of the main reasons for that is he has you know, slightly, a slightly bigger center, slightly more central control. Um, black has two center pawns you know, on e5 and d5, but they are a bit loose. And the main thing is you know, white has the bishop pair, and the bishops work well together. Um, someone else on YouTube suggested e4, which is a bit too crazy, I think. After uh, pawn takes d4, there's this annoying pin. But, so okay, I think looking back, I probably should have played f3 if I wanted to try to win this game. But, you know, I was some punk 2100 playing a, a grandmaster uh, I didn't want to play on. I wanted a draw. So, I played a4 and went in for this line. And we arrived at this endgame, which really by all rights, uh, Neither side should really have anything to play for, and we probably should have agreed to a draw here. But my opponent was some 400 points higher rated than me and wanted to win, and he very nearly did. Uh, so I guess we can take a look at it. Uh, he played rook c8. I brought my queen off of the same file as the rook, because that's scary, and I don't like being scared. I played bishop d5. I simply moved my queen. We traded one set of rooks. And you can kind of see both sides aren't doing a great deal. Uh, I actually start repeating moves here. And he starts walking his king up the board, which was a little strange to me. But not much progress being made. So you can kind of see how this a5 square is something black can never really control, thanks to my bishop. And so if he wants to make any progress, he really does need to control this a5 square. So that's why nothing much is happening. In the long run, though, something did happen. We traded off another set of rooks. And I played this bishop d6 move, which is honestly just, just a little bit silly. Uh, and the reason for that is now you can play a5. So of course, if I take, uh, this bishop is actually hanging now. I needed the queen to defend it. So I have to do something else. So I play queen c5. He plays bishop b3. I play king g3, actually, uh, queen f5. And I decide to go in for f4, uh, which is a little crazy. I could have just taken here, but I was a little worried about uh, this endgame, actually. I thought maybe the black king, being so close to the pawn, 
would uh, help black win, which is why I chose the slightly strange looking f4 first. So now uh, the idea is his king is still closer to the queen side, but I can make my own passed pawn, which will uh, give him some problems uh, with getting over to the queen side. So some more moves happened. And this endgame would be totally over, if not for how far advanced this pawn is. If this pawn was still on a6, there would really be nothing to play for here. So eventually, black does try something with f5, but uh, it's simply not enough. <clears throat> simply not enough. He did eventually give up here, and we agreed to a draw. Um, the important thing is to notice that he can't really take this because I will take uh, all of his pawns and eventually sacrifice my bishop for his last pawn. And the game will be a draw. So those were the three games I had for today. Any questions about this one? It was a little bit more straightforward than the first two. Anything you didn't understand at all? All right, so just to recap, uh, the big ideas I wanted to, to show today are in the early middle game, if you don't know what to do, uh, it's important to stop, and if you can't figure out what you're supposed to do, think about what your opponent wants to do. And if you figure that out, then you can kind of play uh, moves that make sense trying to stop your opponent's plan. Uh, that's the way to, to kind of think about it. And if you can't find a plan for anybody, the thing to fall back on is always improve your pieces. Find ways to make your pieces better. For example here, um, my rooks aren't doing much, and my bishop isn't doing much. So I want to improve my pieces. I want to play moves like c4. I want to play moves like a4, a5, and open some files. Um, so yeah, those are the big things. Improve your pieces. Stop your opponent's plan. Uh, any questions overall? All right. Well, I think I'm going to call the class here then. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, hopefully, you all learned something today. And I'll see you next week on the road to 2000s.